Alright. Now if we have to compare the rate of reaction in these two cases then this is evidently uh, clear that the rate of reaction of first will be greater than rate of reaction of the second for reasons. The reason uh, is the leaving group is same, the nucleophile we are considering is same and the solvent is, is of course the same. So we will always, 95% of the time we will have to look at hindrance. Now hindrance if you look at like the way they write it in the book both the carbon is 1 degree. Here you have 1 degree and here also you have 1 degree. So as such technically the degree of the carbon is same in both the cases but still we understand that this ethyl group will offer less hindrance than this ethenyl group because this is ha having electron cloud density. So when a nucleophile comes near then this electron cloud density will offer repulsion to that nucleophile because both are electron rich. Here the repulsion will be considerably less because they are the electrons are in sigma bond which are more tightly held, more disciplined. Another point would be the here the, the bond between carbon and the living group that is chlorine here is single bond. The bond order is one. Here the lone pair of chlorine is in conjugation with the pi bond so some resonance would be there. Because of that resonance actually the molecule would be in the hybrid state and in that hybrid state there will be some double bond character at this position. So there is the bond order is greater than 1 so that makes chlorine more difficult to leave the substrate and move out because it has to break more than one bond, a bond of bond order more than 1. So here you have bond order of 1 so it is more easy for chlorine to give away its electron and move out. So if we have to talk in technical terms then the bond energy here is less, the bond energy here is more. So it will become mo be more difficult for chlorine to leave out the substrate in this case. That's why leaving out of chlorine is difficult so it will take more amount of time so in a given time less amount of product rate of reaction would be less because of these two factors because of repulsion of ethanol group and the because of the higher bond order the rate of reaction would be considerably less in this case now prima facie uh, these will be the problems uh, very trivial kind of problems we have seen. Now we will elevate the level of uh, problem after we do SN1 and then we will have a sort of, sort of comparison between SN1 and SN2 and then E1 and E2 and then the level of problem would become difficult once the s theory part that has been covered would be more. Then we can really uh, analyze different kind of mechanisms and solve the problems uh, because uh, in a good level of problem or the problem that would be asked in any competitive exam you have to really deal uh, first of all you have to decide which mechanism will operate and then you have to write the product so those kind of problem we can attempt once we have studied all four basic kind of mechanisms SN1, SN2, E1 and E2 so let's quickly uh, cover SN1 now then do some trivial problems on SN1 then E1 and E2 and do the same with them and then come up with a problem that uh, would uh, really make us to think something. So let's now study SN1. SN1 substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Now SN1 uh, let's let's get to the nerve of this uh, mechanism quickly straight away. Suppose I have a substrate like this and there is a solvent in which this substrate is kept. Now we already know what solvation is. Now solvation would start to occur. Solvent will surround the substrate from all the sides. If the solvent is polar then there will be force of attraction between the substrate and the solvent some energy will be released because of that attraction. Whenever attractive force starts to operate, the energy is released 
and that energy goes in some form like if if earth pulls anything down then energy is released that potential energy of the substance comes down is decreased and that energy goes into the kinetic energy in molecular level whenever attractive force operates some energy is released and that energy goes in the form of heat energy and that heat energy can be again utilized to do uh, a work or to do something in into the system here what happens if the solvent is polar the substrate is polar then attractive force of attraction force of attraction would start to operate the solvent's positive end will surround the substrate's negative end and the solvent's negative end will sub will surround the substrate's positive end and then some energy would be released that energy will be required further to break the bond and increase the charge so here what will happen because chlorine is much more electronegative than carbon so chlorine will be having del negative charge carbon will be having del positive charge now if let's start thinking from the beginning nothing has happened yet the solvent is there you have put in the substrate now the solvent will start to surround the chlorine uh, atom the positive end is consider the case of water then in water oxygen is the negative end hydrogen is the positive end now hydrogen will be surrounding chlorine and carbon would get surrounded by oxygen S suppose some amount of solvent has surrounded chlorine and some amount of solvent have surrounded at carbon then some amount of energy has released that energy is utilized to break this bond further if you further break the bond breaking bond means shifting electron towards one particular atom in case of breaking it heterolytically now so and that electron goes to the atom which is more electronegative because already most of the electronic density will be attracted towards more electronegative atom in this case we have chlorine so already most of the electronic density will already be towards the nucleus of the chlorine and some energy is given when then more of electronic density goes towards one of the atom when more of the electronic density will come towards chlorine atom then the negative charge density on chlorine atom will increase and hence the positive charge on carbon atom will also increase because electrons are moving away from the carbon atom so when you have more amount of charge now the charge here will be more than previously so when you have more amount of charge that will attract more amount of solvent molecule so some new solvent molecules will come around this chlorine atom and carbon atoms so some new force of attraction will develop because of new force of attraction some more amount of energy would be released and that more amount of energy released will be further utilized to break this bond when this bond breaks further then more amount of charge is developed on chlorine and hence more amount of positive charge is developed on carbon now we have more amount of charge so further more amount of solvent will come in to surround these two atoms when further more amount of solvents come in to surround these two atoms then more amount of energy is released that energy released is again utilized to break this bond further so in this process gradually electrons will start shifting towards chlorine atom and away from the carbon atom so most of the electronic density will be already now towards chlorine atom and the charge developed on chlorine and carbon will be considerably high this process goes and indefinitely till the time all the electron has been shifted towards chlorine atom and away from the carbon atom when this happens then the charge on chlorine will be equal to minus 1 and the charge on carbon will be equal to plus 1 there is no electronic density in between all the electronic density has moved into the orbital of chlorine so chlorine atom moves away the bond has been broken so these two has been broken they will move freely into the solvent without being attached to each other so this will go away this will go away they will randomly rotate or move into the solvent molecule uh, into the solvent so what has happened ha solvation started solvation released some energy that energy was required to break the bond a little bit that little bond break uh, breaking that bond a little resulted in more amount of charge produced on two different sides that resulted in more amount of solvation that gave more energy that further broke the bond further that further breaking of the bond released more amount of energy and hence the bond is broken so solvation produces ions a solvation had done the lysis on this substrate 
so this is a uh, solvo lysis solvo lysis means so lysis means breaking down as you have studied photolysis hydrolysis photolysis means breaking in front in in presence of light similarly solvo lysis means breaking in the solvent if the solvent is water then particularly that is called hydrolysis so solvo lysis has occurred now solvo lysis will occur only when the solvent is polar because this process was initiated because of force of attraction and this is polar now if there won't be any force of attraction then that process would not have initiated that would have not resulted in lysis of this substrate the solvent needs to be polar for this operation to occur so this is sn1 and we'll see why this is sn1 but this is sn1 and this you must be very very clear to you that sn1 will occur only when the solvent is polar because the mechanism or the process through which this sn1 occurs is of such a nature that it will occur only when the solvent is polar because the energy required for cleavage of this bond will not be available otherwise so the solvent needs to be polar to form to do solvolysis and to release some amount of energy so if you have a very solvent a very polar solvent and you keep a polar substrate like this then this lysis of that substrate into a positive half and a negative half will occur automatically occur without any external assistance now if you have a nucleophile or now if you add or if you have already added a nucleophile then this is a positive end and nucleophile is there suppose a nucleophile is there the nucleophile will come in and puts it electron into the orbital of carbon and form a bond with this carbon and the cl minus will go away so what you will effectively have is nucleophile has come in and formed a bond with the carbon and cl minus has gone out so nucleophile came in cl minus went out so this is a substitution one come in the other one go out substitution and nucleophilic substitution because nucleophilic is getting added and one of the weak nucleophile go is go away from the substrate is removed off from the substrate so this is a nucleophilic substitution now there are two steps involved in this reaction in the first step there's cleavage of the bond because of solvolysis in the second step nucleophile attacks and a bond with a nucleophile is formed now let's identify the rds rds is the one in which is the most difficult step that determines the whole rate of reaction the difficult step is the one in which energy is given the one in which energy is released occurs very fast because if real energy is released then the energy of the molecule will be decreased and stable species have less energy in other words if energy is being released then the system is being stabilized so here the bond is been broken here the bond is being formed so the solvolysis the removing of of chlorine ion from the substrate this is the first step the second step is attack of nucleophile in forming the bond so this step solvolysis is the breaking of the bond attack of nucleophile is forming of a bond so this step will be the rds because this step will be more difficult because in this step energy will be required now in the first step you don't have a uh, nucleophile nucleophile comes in the second step in the first step you don't have nucleophile in the picture we are totally talking about solvolysis solvent is breaking up the substrate so you don't have a nucleophile in the second step nucleophile part will participate and nucleophile will put its electron into the anti bond on uh, the bonding rather of the carbon so a uh, nucleophile is not there in the rds in the rds you have only one molecule substrate that's it substrate is being broken and solvent is there nucleophile is not there so in the rds we have only one molecule so this is unimolecular if you just remember in sn2 this there was only one step and of course that step would was the rds so nucleophile was putting its electron in the antibonding and simultaneously this leaving group was leaving out so we had two molecules one substrate and the other nucleophile present simultaneously in the rds here nucleophile do not come in first the leaving group moves out and then the nucleophile comes in so there is only one molecule present in the rds that is a substrate itself so this is unimolecular this was bimolecular so this is sn1 and this is sn2 
SN1 doesn't mean the step would be 1 because the step in the reaction is 2. Rather in SN2 the step in the reaction is only 1. So that was concerted reaction SN2 and here we'll have two different steps. S1 and 2 is refers to molecularity. Molecularity refers to the number of molecule in the RDS. So this is SN1. So they are very uh, important conclusion you can draw out easily and very quickly. One, the most important thing here would be solvent. If the solvent is not polar, then SN1 reaction cannot take place because such as a kind of ions cannot be formed in a non-polar solvent because a non-polar solvent there will be no attraction between this polar substrate and non-polar solvent so there will be no release of energy which cannot be required to break this bond further so you cannot have these ions breaking substrate into the ionic form in a non-polar solvent so exclusively this mechanism will operate only in a polar solvent apart from this if you observe when you break this uh, substrate into ionic form then the plus charge comes on this carbon when a plus charge comes on this carbon then it's a cation and if if the cation is more stable then more easy it will be to break this substrate into ionic form 